New project day, my favourite day of the week. Just finished the barrier above my garage door and now I can get back to something honestly a bit more fun and a lot more interesting. Two times planter boxes. Friends of ours have just moved houses, they've got a nice little terrace and the wifey suggested that we make them two lovely planter boxes. She's already got the palms to go in them and I decided to use this as an excuse to learn SketchUp for the first time. So on my toy box build, I used Steve's SketchUp plans from Woodworking for Mere Mortals, and this is what I've come up with for my planter boxes. Very, very helpful is the cutting list, and I will put these up online so you can download them and use them too after I've built it, just in case I have to make any changes. Now, as this is a no table saw workshop, as usual, I'm trying to use dimensional lumber where possible, and I've been trying to keep the cost down on this at approximately $35 per unit for this project. Those costings will also be on there too. Here's my MDF. I've already done the pre-cutting in the car park of North Shore Timber and Hardware. I'll put the flag up here if you want to see how I use the Craig Rip Cut in order to do that. I'm hoping this is actually going to be quite a quick build too. I am getting better, I am getting faster, and if I stop talking so much, be a quick video as well. All right, let's get cracking. First step, posts times eight. These are gonna be exactly 50 centimeters long, and as usual, I'm gonna cut them to 51 and then use my little squaring trick in order to bring them back to 50 and have all four for each box exactly the same way. Okay, quick and easy with the square cut. So these are about 51 centimeters at the moment. I did pretty good there actually with my measuring. Look at that, it's not too bad. But we can make it better. Let's square these to exactly 50 centimeters. So now they're all nice and square on one end. I can measure my 50 and then cut all four at once and trim these uneven edges down to exactly the same length. Beautiful. Do the other one. I might actually mark all of these just because they're going to get mixed up a lot. This can be set A. Right, so for the main frame, connecting the posts together, I'm using 19 by 42, another dimensional lumber. They need to be 340 millimeters long each, and I need 16 of them. I can pre cut them because I have to get them the same length in order to keep this whole thing square. This really is a super useful technique. I've got all eight of my runners for planter box A. As you can see, they're raggedy, but I am going to be able to cut all of them at exactly the same time, making them exactly the same length. The next step involves the posts and some fairly precise routing because you can never over-engineer a very simple project. I need an exactly seven millimeter deep route that is 11 millimeters wide on two sides of those posts. That will work. Router table set up and I've run a test piece on one of the offcuts of the 30 by 30 posts. On the plans you'll see the routing that I'm doing because I want to front mount the MDF. I don't want to tack it in from behind. The way I'm going to do that is with a route which will make the posts end up looking like this. The trickiest bit on the actual pieces is they're 50 centimeters long, but I need more than 47.5 centimeters routed to give it an inch down the bottom of foot space. So I've set up a stop block here, get to the stop block and stop an inch from the end. Right, that's all eight of the first grooves done. Now it's very, very important to keep my geometry in mind to make sure these come out looking like this. Otherwise I'll have to start all over again. I'm moving the stop block from one side to the other because what I'm gonna to have to do to get this cut done is actually make sure I feed it through the right way, which would be this orientation. I'm gonna to have to push in and then scoot all the way out the other side.
It's my favourite part of just about any project, Craig Jig Time. I really like using this thing, it is genuinely enjoyable, and it does make life easy. However, because of my fancy pantsy joinery here, <laughs> pocket screws, fancy, you can see I'm going to have a fairly small amount of wood to work with in order to make my two butt joints. So I've done some test pieces, and the important thing to note is I've used different settings for the two holes. So on the Craig you've got the A, B and C. I've used the A and B spacing for one piece and the B and C spacing for the other piece because that way, as they're both screwing into a fairly small piece of wood, I should hopefully avoid the situation where the screws smack into each other as I am putting this all together. All right, let's nap these two together and see what happens. Fantastic. That test was a success and I learned a few things. Firstly, the 19mm I've got set to the depth of my pocket holes actually means that using the 19mm recommended screw length, 38, I blow through into where I've rabbited out my grooves for the MDF. So I had to step down to the 25mm screws and they fit perfectly. On top of that, they haven't collided. The screws have gone in where they should. So I'm going to keep that two hole pattern where I've got the skinnier holes and the wider holes. Lastly, it's important to remember to make sure that you put your pocket holes on the outside because that means the inside of the planter box is going to be all nice and pretty and the MDF is actually going to cover these ugly holes when you put it all together. Great, a lot of screwing to do now. Better get some drilling done first though. Well, if I can count correctly, that's 64 holes drilled in 10 minutes, or thereabouts. Much faster and fast forward. Assembly time. I've got enough screws. I need 64 of them. Like you got two kits. Okay, just making sure I've got a wide space and a narrow space. Let's get cracking. It's going to take a little bit longer than 10 minutes, I think. Okay, so yep, there's my spacer. It's going to work well. It's a tiny bit smaller than this one, so that the pressure actually goes onto this wood, and that's how I measure the height off the bottom for all these bottom runners. All right, two down. Now the harder part, joining these ones together. There we go, two frames done. The second one went together easier, as always, once you've done it the first time, but then the second time you get a better idea of how to position your clamps and so on. This one's got a tiny bit of a wobble. This one was much better. I'm not quite sure where that's come from, but I'm actually going to put feet on these made of solid hardwood to make them a bit more resistant to any water they might end up sitting in, and I'll be able to correct that little wobble there. Otherwise, looking good. Four. This needs to take a bit of weight, so again I'm using 19mm, but this time 90 wide boards, there'll be three of them. And just for funsies, in my SketchUp it was 378mm of what it just happened to work out to be. And honestly, I'm only about a millimetre or two off on both these boxes. I'm really impressed by that. Accuracy is certainly not my strong point with the dodgy jigs and stuff that I use. 
So that's great. Nothing fancy for the floor, just glue and nails to hold it down. So there are gaps here in case there's any water that needs to drain out. I'm obviously going to have to seal this wood really well. And I am just going to eyeball it. Now the hard part of the frames are done, a little bit of preparation for the last two steps being the top cap and the side panelling. 60 grit sandpaper is going to be your best friend just to even out some of the dodgy workmanship there so the cap sits on nicely. So here's my little rounded out bit where the router of course can't cut a square so I just need to get the chisel in here and flatten it off. How blunt are my router bits? Oh well, before. After. Yes, it looks a little bit ugly because my skill with chisels is crap, but at least the MDF sheet will fit flush in there now. Even though I'm using plans here, I've just decided I've got a design fault and I will edit it in my SketchUp, but for now I'm gonna to have to correct it because these boards are glued down. When I get the side panels on here, there's actually gonna be a small gap over this runner and water, if it ever spilled in, would just pull. There is a tiny little gap there, but nowhere near big enough. So for this particular one, I'm just gonna get a force a bit and drill drain holes on either side. But this problem could easily be avoided simply by moving this panel half a centimeter inwards so that if water does fall on here from leaking out of the bottom of the pot, it can just run out. So this is not ideal, but at least it's, as usual, a bit of a correction that's easy to achieve. I might also note that I've got a backing board clamped in here so that the force a bit won't blow through. Just discovered another unintended consequence of a new barrier that I've put up on top there. I've got a diesel engine running outside of the train at the moment and it actually cuts down the noise when I close the garage door quite a lot. Happy with that. Back to the point in hand. I've already cut down a lot of the MDF in the car park of North Shore Timbering Hardware in order to make it fit into the wagon to get it home. Now I've got the rip cut and I'm going to start cutting the sides. I've just checked and again I'm pretty happy with my accuracy here. The plans were going to be 355mm, I've just measured up all eight panels and it looks like that is still the exact cut I need to make. So we've set it on here, I've got these too thick just to make my life a little bit easier and then I'm going to put some decorative routing onto these panels too for no other reason than being decorative. While I do really love this thing, overuse I've discovered one slight problem with it that you have to be very careful of and why I take it so slow. As soon as this metal bar goes over the edge of your support piece, it drops just a little bit, only a millimetre, but it does tend to drop. You really have to keep the weight on the circular saw and be very careful for that last, what is it going to be, two inches of cut. So just do be aware that that is a slight limitation of the rip cut. There are some things which the rip cut can't do, and that includes taking off very small amounts of material. So I've just measured up these boards and they are a millimetre too wide to fit into the frames. I'm going to cut all four of them at once, and I've just got my homemade uh, rip jig, which I did a long time ago now, and it still does come in handy from time to time. You probably can't see it, but there is a blade width of material on all four sides here. We'll take it off at the same time. Well, that took a little bit of trimming, but there are all sides cut and fit. And importantly, I haven't even tested this yet, the pot fits too. Now we can do that decorative routing. Right, there's quite a bit going on on the router table now, so let's take a look at how I've set up for these decorative cuts. First thing you're going to notice is I have two stop blocks, one on each end. This piece here is actually going to be my test piece, 
And those two stop blocks are set up so that when I do my cuts, they're all going to be plunge cuts. I'm going to actually have a gap at both ends of the board. So the board's going to be dropped down like this, one inch from the end, slid all the way along, and stop one inch from the other end. My pattern looks something like this. I decided to modify my SketchUp plans a little bit, which I'll go back and change later. I got it at 40, so I'll be able to do both sides just by twisting it around like so. Then I'll move the fence back to 100 millimeters, again do both sides, 120 millimeters, and then 177.5 millimeters is the middle. So the trick here is it's going to be a lot of repetition. I'm currently set using the fence and the center of the blade to 40 millimeters. I'll do all my 40 millimeter cuts, then push the fence back 60 to 100 millimeters, and then do all the 100 millimeter cuts, so on and so forth. This is going to take quite a while. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by eight, makes 56 cuts to do. I'm doing them on a V bit, and I've got the depth set to about half of these nine millimeter boards, around four and a half, five mil. And I hope that looked pretty, but as usual, we're going to run some tests first, just to make sure I have not completely bollocks all of that up. Let's see how the first one turns out. Here's the result of the first cut, and I'm really happy with it. It's going to provide some nice contrast on those boring MDF boards and the depth seems pretty good and the stop blocks seem pretty good too. It's going to be all painted up afterwards but that little bit of extra detail should really lift this project. Right, that's all the 40s done. Now we push the table back six centimeters, do the tens. Getting there. The other one's still got the final glue up going. I could only do two panels at a time for my lack of clamp. But this one is ready for its final touch ups before painting. Got the flush trim bit set on the router, and I'm just going to take off the edges of these, which I left a bit proud on purpose because it's always easier to trim down than it is to try to cut them exactly the right size. So you can see there, I had a little bit of trouble just near the posts because they jut out a bit further than the standard MDF, but I was able to get enough of it down that sandpaper should do the rest, and then just be nice and flat in order to put the top cap on. To try and mesh in this bit here, with this bit along here, I've got my large round over bit in and we're just going to quickly run around all four edges to round off primarily these corners but also this one here just a little bit too. So there you go, you can see what we've achieved. We've got two nice smooth corners on here and a very shallow round over on that part as well, which should help with the water runoff. Okay, I think that's most of my cutting done on these actual bits. They're ready for undercoating.